let's just go with for the moment the book and kind of what what um, what you're actually arguing now. As I was reading through it, and we talked, I talked to you in the emails a little bit about it. Said I thought like Howling Storm is a great title, but it also felt like a great title would have been Wet, Cold, and Miserable, as sort of like what the soldiers were constantly experiencing. But just in, in kind of in a nutshell, what is your big argument in in the Howling Storm? Well, I ought to talk about the title first. Um, yeah, Wet, Cold, and Miserable would, would sum it up pretty well. I, I think I'm one of those dark turn people. And I, I concluded many years ago that, that fighting in the Civil War was a horribly miserable experience. And there was nothing in this project that changed my mind. Um, I've called it the weather book for years because I had a heck of a time coming up with the title. My wife calls it the mud book. <laughs> that was another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of rain, a lot of misery, and a lot of mud in this book. I think I think the argument is that we cannot fully understand the American Civil War until we take it back outside mm. into the environment. What do I mean by that? The Civil War generation had much more contact with the outside world, with, with the environment, than I think we do. I mean, even those stereotypical pasty-faced Northeastern clerks didn't have air conditioning or central heating. They were walking to and fro from their offices to their homes. They were, they were outside a lot. And the majority of Civil War soldiers were farmers. They were really outside a lot, like I was sometimes when I was a kid. So there, there are certain expectations when you grow up in an intellectual world like that, mm -hmm. uh, including the notion that there are certain things you don't have to explain because everybody knows these things. Well, mm -hmm. here we are, 150 plus later years later. Uh, I'm sitting here in my home office uh, where I wrote the book, literally right in this spot, uh, with air conditioning on seven or eight months a year because I live in East Central Alabama. Um, and I think there's a tendency for, for people of not just our generation, but previous generations to, to sit in our recliners and our air conditioning or in our central heating and look at the Civil War and not fully understand that no, it would not have been easy for George Meade to have trapped Lee north of the Potomac. And no, we can't conclude that George McClellan was a coward or petulant or timid, all the words we used for him, because he didn't take Richmond in 1862. Once, once you factor in the environment, once you factor back into the war, I, I think it changes the way that we understand the war, both on the battlefield, in terms of the outcomes of battles and campaigns, but I think also on the home front, uh, in terms of how some really unusual weather um, undermined the Confederate experiment. Mm -hmm. I will say, in all honesty, not as a way to sell books, but in all honesty, I will say, I don't look at the Civil War the same way I did 10 years ago, because Having taken this this war that was classically a contest between the blue and the gray and turned it into a contest between the blue, the gray, and the weather, I look at it differently. I find the semester that I'm teaching it differently uh, at certain points. I mean, dramatically, no, you know, the union still wins. Um, but I think I understand it better, and I think I understand it more in the context of how its participants would have understood it. Mm. Well, it, it feel, felt like a little bit w when you were talking that, and I know you're an Auburn fan, so it's sort of like it's this, a lot of writing has been this kind of Monday night quarterback that you, you kind of judge the decisions of the battlefield from kind of the luxury of a home and kind of mm -hmm. it, it, not giving it the full kind of um, attention that you need for it. 